Well, thank you for joining us for this awesome uh, demonstration video for Smile Crew Repeat. We're going to be using supplies from the November 2017 surprise. Um, this is pretty exciting. It's, it's oil paints, as you can see. Um, and we're going to get started right now. All right, so we have a still life set up here. I have my canvas set up. And I have this board that I have my paints on here. So you can see what we have going on. This is the 1980 Gamlin White, Titanium White. This is the Gamblin 1980 Transparent Red Oxide that we're using. And then this is the fun color. This is the Gamlin Torret Gray. And what they do with that is that they get all the recycled pigment from their air filtration system uh, every year and they mix it up into this mess of a color and they call it torrent gray um, I mixed some Payne's gray and some white that I had and that gray was much cooler if you can see I think you can see it how it's much cooler much more of a blue hue and then the torrent gray this for this one anyway is much more of a warm color of a brownish gray um, so that's what I have on my palette that's what I'm going to be using today to paint this still life of this little pumpkin here and what I did is I cut out this little viewfinder um, just a piece of cardboard with a rectangle cut out and I marked roughly where the center is so I can make a composition so I can really crop in the pumpkin like that or I can move it out oh, hold on I'm looking through the camera here we go like that and the center is where you really don't want your center of interest, which is funny because it's called your center of interest. You want it off center, so maybe right around here, 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 or here. So I'm going to do it centered right there, zoomed in a little more, and then a little higher. So it's going to be about there where I do it, what I'm hoping to do. So the top of the pumpkin will be about halfway. All right, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use a pencil. Sometimes I just start painting. Today I'm gonna use a pencil to draw um, just cause I think it will be quicker for you to watch me get going. So what's halfway? About there. Mm, a little higher. So right there is halfway, just so I know compared to my viewfinder. So my pencil is there. So what I'm doing is the edge of my, I taped it on here, so the edge to here, to my pencil. So I'm gonna make a line with the tip of it right there. And now I'm gonna make it here and there. Right, so it's right there. So now it's much easier to see where the middle of that is. So it's right there. So I'm gonna do that again up here. Right there, right there, right there. And that's just so I have some idea as a basis. And how big? So I just do a real quick oval to see, is that enough? Is that too big? Is that gonna be, is that too small? I think that's actually maybe about right. Maybe I'll move it over to the right a little bit off center because we have that dramatic shadow coming in, don't we? So I have that, and that's going in probably about there. And it's the angle, so I'm holding my pencil here to the angle of the shadow from my point of view, which is a little off from the camera angle. And that's what I'm gonna try to, it looks like it's about there. So that's that shadow. It's sharper here, softer there. And now let's find where the stem comes from. So it's in the middle, vertically, right? So there somewhere. And if you look at the top of the pumpkin and measure, let's try to find halfway from the bottom to the top. So the bottom to the top, I'm gonna see if I can point to it on the camera here so you can see it. 
probably about right there. So you know the stem where it meets the pumpkin is on the top half of it. So I think it's about right there. Again, I'm using my pencil angle from where I am to see the angle of the stem. It's about this with arms fully extended straight because if it's bent while you're moving it, it's going to change your angle. So you want to try to keep your arms straight and then keep the rest of the your wrist and everything steady. And then you double check it. Yep, I think that's close. And from where I'm standing, I need to see on my drawing, I drew the stem line past the edge of the pumpkin. Right? So from, is it past the edge of the pumpkin? No, it is not. It is probably a little over halfway between the edge and the center. This is the center. So probably about right there. So that's about where it goes. Now I'm just gonna, and then it doesn't go straight from the center. It curves up more and then out. Okay, and now I'm gonna make some notes as to where all these, what all these bumps look like. And I might not use them when I'm painting, but learning even just a little bit of practice of seeing the pumpkin now is gonna help me when I'm painting because maybe I noticed, oh yeah, this curves down and in and there's another bulge here and there's a shadow on the, on the far side of this bulge here. And then this is in the shadow from the from uh, from this shadow this whole shadow and it goes across it and now this comes down like this bulges out here kind of straight right there bulges out a little bit there and then comes under so let's exaggerate a little bit so I'm gonna change that okay and then we have some shadow just a little bit right here because the light's strong right there, and then it's... This is lower. And then this comes up like that, and the, the top cast shadow, so from the light hitting here, hitting this shape, is actually over here somewhere. So this just runs off there. We have it here, maybe a little bit. I think we got a little bit of that. Let's see if we can bring a little bit of that in. So what I'm doing there is following that shadow line. And that is very soft, so that's going to be just a little bit of light right there. And yes, I have... So looking at this... So this is light. This is all going to be dark. And hopefully we can get that nice and dark. So it can really make this, the light on the pumpkin, pop and shine through. All right. So I have paper towel, so I have paper towels here that I'm using to wipe my brush. Um, we also have Gamsol with this surprise, which is awesome. This is the odorless uh, mineral spirits. Uh, to clean your brushes and you can also use it um, which I'll use a little bit to make the paint um, like a, raw, a wash like a medium to use on it and I do have I use this stuff all the time I have my own little container it's a baby food jar I label it thinner so I know what it is and I use that um, the other thing you use with gam Gamsol for is to clean brushes I have this um, jar here. It's got a handle. This is great. It's got two clasps uh, to hold the top on. It's a seal and you can see I need to clean it out but there's Gamasol in there. Lots of nasty paint in there and this metal bar <clears throat> to clean your brushes. So this one's old and used and I have to clean it out but um, yeah that's it. I have to clean it out. Yeah. So, all right, so this 
So I'm gonna use a little bit of the thinner Gamsol. And what am I gonna use? I'm gonna draw, so I wanna start with, you go, I go from darks to lights. So the darkest dark would definitely be the shadows uh, up here. Um, so let's see, maybe we'll use, see if this gray is dark. And this is a uh, Royal and Langnickel Zen brush that I'm using. Uh, it's a filbert, uh, which is the shape of it. So you can see it's flat and skinny but it's got the rounded head um, instead of like this. This would be, a, this is a flat or the top square. And then we have a round, let's see. Uh, where's the round one? And this is a round filbert. There's an extra, here's a bigger one. It's an extra long one from Windsor Newton. So, just different different brushes for different things. So yeah, I have some thinner. And so right now I'm kinda just filling in the background and I'm using some of the thinner to try to make it flow, because I want it to flow, because I want to cover that up pretty quickly. I'm not going to worry about way up here right now, because you don't need to see me, see me just doing coloring in the page. So I'm just going to, oh, you can see how that's really, there's a lot there, so it's very wet right there. And this is the, oh, you can see right here. So I have a lot there. And that's something you can do on your painting if you wanted to. You can make it look artsy um, if you want to. Well, let's see if we can do that here. But it might get a little messy. And usually when I'm painting, I like to, I really like to just run into and start painting. I don't do the drawing that I did here. Um, which is funny because then I really waste a lot of time. It's not really wasting, it's spending time painting. Um, but you saw how that quickly that really covered that up pretty quick. Um, I'm going to connect this background shadow to the, uh, the, sh the shadow cast by the pumpkin. And now I'm using the flat edge and I'm going to now use the sharper edge to try to get that right there. And let's keep that in mind. Okay. So even right there, and that's why you, you wanna try to get an image with a, a strong dark and light. We can already see what this is, can't we? We can see there's a strong light coming in from here you have the shit because you know the lights coming from this side because you have this big shadow over here you have a little bit of a light peeking through here which will add a little bit of an interesting shape uh, and then you have this shape uh, that's there so I'm actually gonna go in and finish the top of this just so you can see just so it can be a little more striking for what you're seeing And so when you're using these uh, oil paints, use paper towels, don't use, you don't want to use rags um, because rags can uh, spontaneously combust, which just means just explode. Nah, not really, I don't think it's explode. It catches on fire just, just because, and obviously scientists and other people know how that works better than I do, um, but you just don't want to do it. So I use paper towels. Um, and I usually um, get rid of them out of my studio uh, pretty regularly if they're, certainly if they're smelly, I do. 
All right, so that didn't take that long, and that's because he is the thinner. Um, all right, so let's see where the shadows are. So now that I did that, I'm gonna go in the transparent red oxide, and I'll probably add some of that in. Some of that will come into that color anyway, because there's some variation in that color. So let's see. I'm going to mix some colors here. So I have some of that and that. And I'm probably uh, done with my thinner right now. I don't use much thinner once I'm actually, once I'm painting. Um, but I'm gonna be using my palette knife and I'm gonna be mixing a little bit of white in this color. Just to have, so I can have different values. Okay. I'm gonna scrape that off. And I'm gonna just get more of that. And then I'm gonna put a lot less white in that one, I hope. Uh, I think that's about the same amount. And I don't mix, uh, I have signs on, in my studio. Oh, I've taken them down. But I had a sign up that always says use more paint because I'm very stingy with paint. I'm not sure why I'm just, I just am. So I make a little bit just so I have some different values. So I'm going to use this transparent oxide red straight from the tube as my darkest dark. This will be a middle, this will be a lighter, and then I'll use the white also. I'm going to mix some more red and I'm going to grab some of this gray yeah, and see what that color make what that makes that's really just a warmer gray so I'm gonna put more red in there to see if see what that makes okay so that is warmer than the other gray Okay, all right, so now I'm just going to start painting the, pine uh, the pineapple, the pumpkin. And these paints are really nice, Gamlin. I use them. Obviously, I wouldn't be getting them for you guys the advantage of uh, doing this uh, subscription box as an artist because I know what I want I know what I like I know what's good um, I know how to use them so I think and I hope that translates to a better experience uh, better boxes and you enjoy your monthly surprises a lot Yeah, I think I talked about this uh, maybe in the last video or somewhere I know I did, but this is really, I've been hoping to get this surprise, our monthly subscription box here, this one in particular, put together for a long time. It's just, uh, it's hard to get it uh, because there's so many things you need to make it happen. Uh, of in the price I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna lie to you it's expensive to get this stuff um, and it just couldn't work so we teamed up with uh, the great people at Gamlin um, and we worked something out to be able to bring this to you guys so please uh, share 
what you're making or even you just you, that you just got it and unboxing it and that you have gambling paints and you're so excited and well if you're excited but I'm assuming you will because this stuff's fantastic um, so please share that you got them that you love them thank them that well thank uh, thank them for what they for working with us and getting this uh, box together because it's really uh, it's super exciting super exciting for me um, I, my favorite are charcoal and oil paints um, so I think the very first box we did three years ago over three years ago was a charcoal box um, and when we when we do that again I, I enjoy that and, and I really like this one so Three years, that's unbelievable. No, it's very believable, but time flies when you're having fun. Or working your butt off. I don't know which one. I think it's both. I think it's fun working your butt off. Certainly enjoy it. Alright, so that's what I'm going to do to start for the darks. And I was fairly careful in just cleaning my brush off now. And how I clean it off, I'll show you this too, is I am just doing this to a paper towel. And I'll do it slow here so you can see. Just pushing down on it to get some of the paint off. It doesn't need to be super clean. If you have a place, if you have a jar to do your gamma saw, I don't even, it's not gamma saw, gam saw. I put an extra syllable in there, gam saw. Um, you can do that to have a nice clean, super clean brush. You don't need to. Um, maybe uh, if we're going to do white highlights, which we're not, there's no white on there. Because uh, that, that brightest bright on there is pretty light, uh, pretty dark in color anyway. So, And a way to show you that is if you keep looking at the pumpkin. Put something white over there. see see how white that white tube of paint is so now you can really see that even the brightest bright of the orange on the pumpkin is still a mid mid value anyway oh that's what I should have should have we should do a painting of a paint tube that'd be good that'd be a nice thank you I'll do one of those later on this week um, for this sometime this month sometime in November and I'll post that for you maybe I'll do a quick little video of it too all right so now I'm going to see I'm gonna grab this middle color we have here and see where I can put that in there's some oh that is not too much darker though I mean not too much lighter which is okay This will help the transitions. I don't think that color is much lighter at all. Okay, so not much of that one. So I think the most of it is going to be this color and I think I'm gonna need a lot of it so I'm going to mix more of that before I get going and I'm gonna use this color because that color was too close to the other color uh, to the to the transparent red right out of the tube So 
So now I'm painting. So I started with the darks. Now I'm moving into the lights. And this I have from where I am. I have some light underneath, behind the stem. And I'm holding the brush sideways because I'm using the curve to make these edges a little softer. This one I'm using the top because this edge is a little sharper. And so I'm go also going to I'm not just going to be using that gray for the background and the transparent, the reds for the pumpkin. I am going to incorporate both of those in each one. So this, so now you can see I'm mixing that color because I need it a little lighter up here but not quite as light. And these are still pretty, but pretty. You can see where this pumpkin color and the background are, but in the real, in the still life, it kind of blends. So let's see if we can, well, let's see what this color does to, the, to our painting. So right now, if I just go along the edge, it kinda, kind of, softens the transition. And over here, there's actually, there's a lot of light bouncing back up. Do you see that in there? There's a lot of light bouncing back up in here. But maybe we can bit of that gray and maybe that can cool the red off because this red is warm so if we get some of this reflected and then what I did there is just soften that edge because I'm trying to I want to blend them in a little bit there so they're not quite so um, separated and every time I bring my hand down like that. I'm wiping my brush off just to get if there's any paint on there so I can have it a little bit cleaner. Because right there, I didn't paint on it. I just brought the brush over it to blend the, that transition. And now I'm just trying to fill in the texture of the canvas a little because it's distracting for me. here and a little bit here and then we'll go back in and paint uh, the stem and I think that is this is a soft shadow because that is where the shadow of the box here
All right, so this white here is way too white. Let's see if we can, it's gray. I put that gray down on purpose because I knew we were gonna be using this gray. So I just wanted to. So I'm gonna use big glob of white, big glob of gray. And you saw I just did it with my brush. So you can, you mix with your brush too. It's just, you have a lot of paint on there now. So. And I don't think, you can't tell from there, but I don't think that's light enough. So I'm grabbing another glob of white and I'm gonna mix it down here. I'm not going right in the middle because I wanna see what I have. And I'm gonna get my thinner out again because I wanna cover this quickly and just be done with the white. And it's gonna be funny because it's gonna show um, these are gonna look brighter because this white is not gonna be there. So one, one of the schools of, one of the ways of painting is you cover the whole canvas quickly so you're not comparing your highlights to the white of the canvas. And I need more. I want that to be lighter. Because I really want it to show that it's the light. Oh, look at that. Smile, create, repeat sticker. Fantastic. If you love your box, I know you do, please uh, think of us this Christmas when you're thinking of other people. Um, sorry about all the promotions, everyone, but just ignore me and watch me paint. Um, but please, if you, if you enjoy this and you're thinking of getting a, a great gift for someone you love, Hey, you can get to someone you don't like. I don't care. They will love it. They'll get a new friend because they'll uh, they'll like it so much. They'll be like, wow. This is the greatest gift I've, greatest gift I've ever gotten. Well, except for the car and the TV and the iPad and the iPhone. And, but pretty close. Maybe fourth. Fourth or fifth on the list. So the trick there is I had the line of the dark paint and the light paint, and I just got a clean brush, um, just brushed right over it, softens it. And I'm gonna do that again here. Softens it there. And I'm just gonna feather that a little more. And I didn't think I need to bring the um, this color into there. Soften, this one's very soft because that's really far from the light source. Okay. Get some more. All right, now let's see where we can Get some lighter, some more light in here. And let's get some more of that, more middle value. some of that way you can see what colors I'm using. I think that adds a little bit. Yeah that is hope I wasn't just standing in front of the camera there. Guess I'll find out when I edit it. And I like having 
brush strokes in my painting because it's a painting. Um, so I don't um, try to eliminate all my brush strokes. Oh, I don't like that one though. See, these are starting to go back in and paint over that. We gotta soften this here. That's nice contrast, but that is way too sharp of an edge. Oh, that doesn't go there. And I'm gonna go back in and add some more of that light there. So I think that part is looking pretty good for what I'm trying to do here. This part, we'll get that. This is... just in, in general it's nice to have not necessarily gray when you're painting but to think about using grays because gray is just a neutral color so if you have um, whatever mix some colors well, let's say red yellow makes orange so if you add some blue to that and well, all three primary colors red yellow and blue mix those together you'll get a brown add a little bit of white to it, and you're gonna to start to get a gray. Maybe a little more blue will be a cooler gray, but experiment with those. But if you add the complement to a color you're working on, that dulls it down. So if you have a bright green, if you add some orange to it, is that right? No, blue. If you have a, a bright blue and you add some orange to it, you're gonna get a, a grayish color. And that you can utilize in your color composition to really make some nice uh, paintings, uh, colors. The painting determines, you gotta figure out how to, how to do a good painting, not the colors, not just the colors. Blah, 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 blah. Out of shadow there, more shadow there. Some light. Oh, I like that one. So I used the sharp edge and then dragged it over. And that the drag really brought the transition down. Didn't work there. There's some shadow there, so let's try to bump that shadow up a little bit. Oh, that was off your shot, but you couldn't see me do that, so there you go. stem going a little better and I'm gonna make that that's actually pretty light eh, there is it's very dark but there's light on it hmm what is this oh, let's just see if we can do that stem in this gray maybe
Yep, that will. This is actually nice because this stem is cooler in temperature. Um, so more, it's not blue, but bluish um, than the pumpkin. The pumpkin's warm up, the orange. Um, so maybe this contrast of the warmer pumpkin, cooler stem. I'm gonna add a little more white to that. See if we can get that to... Nope, let's try that again. Yeah, there we go. is picking up some of the thinner that we use. So that does not look good. So I'm going to have to cut into that. And that is darker than the highlight. So I need to make that darker actually. But I have to go in with this light back here and reshape what that stem looks like. Probably a little bit more light there. Okay. And now this. I think we are almost done. Yep, so that's that. That stem is not looking uh, done yet, so what can we do to that? So I can't tell. So let's say I can't tell what the value of that stem is. Looking through the camera, it's very dark. Squinting, there's a big white highlight right at the end there. But I think that would be distracting on here. But I am going to add it a little bit. Um, I have to shape that. That looks like a sloppy stem, so I need the background color. And I'm mixing it a bunch on my... Mixing it, get on my brush like this, because I want that paint to mix with whatever paint is on my brush, so I have that color. So now, the stem here, if you look, I want it to come up like this and probably be like that. So I have to go in... that goes up and I flip the brush over so I have a clean side where there's the paint I want not the paint I'm picking up from my canvas okay so that's a little better now I'm gonna have to go in and get some of this red and finish right in there. Yeah, let's see if we can add some dark to under here. Nope, it doesn't really look dark. Maybe this one looks darker. Let's see. Yep. Okay, and that comes around. Okay, and you step back from it so you can see it a little distance. And I think, let's compare it in here. Shadow, so this is off right here compared to your point of view. So I'm gonna go in and add, bring that in there. Let's bring some of this warmer shadow. To there so that blends in because I like that. And 
this edge is very sharp here or over there it's not so how am I gonna take care of that I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm just going to um, run it over there And did that do it? It's closer. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to put a little bit of the light color on there. And then that is smoother. That needs to be darker down there. Yeah, I think that's got this color on it. And we see a little bit of, and you don't need to get everything. So that line is too uh, drastic. So I'm just going to go ahead again. There's a dark right there, so I'm gonna put that in right where the stem in this. And I'm gonna go in and put in, that's really how this paint painting works. You get all of it done really quickly and then you spend forever with the little bits and that's what really elevates. So if you spend three hours on it, you could probably do cover the whole thing get really far in I don't know whatever um, two and a half hours let's say in the last half hour is where you really you see the real um, jump in the level of the painting I know that happens to me and it's it's sometimes very discouraging for me um, because I feel like I'm better than what I'm putting on the canvas but that's just because I'm at an early stage so it takes a lot of discipline and um, trust that, yes, you know what you're doing, just keep working at it um, and you'll get there. Um, so that's what, you, well, that's what you need to do. So it's a process, so you just keep working on it um, and have fun with it. Uh, so I am going to put more white in here just because I want to. Have it a little more, a little lighter. And then this shadow, this here is not good enough for me. This is too sharp, light dark. So I need to soften that up somehow. But we're almost done. Um, so we have this color here. And that shadow comes in much lower down here. So I'm putting some of that in there. And then, right, is that better? And then there, I think from my view, there's actually a little bit of shadow, a little bit darker, right under there. Maybe if I just soften that edge, that makes it just enough. I think that's better. And now I just need to fix that transition. I'm gonna double check that angle again from the beginning where we did with the pencil, remember? Keep your arms straight to do it. And that's not even close. See? So I need to bring that. Let's see. I'm gonna use white for that. So in other ways, obviously, you can paint with the middle value. So this is the darker color, right? This is the 
the highlighted this lighter color here and if you mix them you can paint and then maybe do the trick and transition them with the brush like that light pressure here because I'm really trying to just really soften that Oh, and I did two too many. See that? That extra mark I did there? So you just go back in with some of the light. And you blend... Because when you're blending, you're doing that, you're pushing this paint up and onto the other paint. So what you have is you have the darker paint, uh, lighter paint, darker paint, canvas from highest to lowest. And I think that is going to be... Uh, that's about it. Let me... So thanks again um, for subscribing, for watching. Please comment. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think, as long as it's nice. If it's not nice, uh, well, be constructive. Don't just go, who's dumb? I don't like orange pumpkins. Okay, well, sorry. Yeah, actually, I'm not sorry. Watch something else. Uh, you can see that there's a pumpkin in it. Um, but anyway, getting back. Yeah, if there's something you want to see, maybe in the next video, leave a comment. Um, I'd love to see what, uh, what you guys want to see, and maybe I can make a video doing that. So thank you again for watching, and I hope you have a great month, and please show me what you've made with these awesome uh, Gamlin oil paints.